Okay folks, time to do a little break upgrade on the EP3 Type R. These discs, as you might have seen from the previous video, are a set of Brembo blanks that you can see I've painted up the hubs and the outer edges of. Um, and the main upgrade are these going to be these pads here. And these are Ferrodo and the compound is the DS1.11. Um, so ideally these will match up a little better. Um, than the DS2500s that are on the rear. They should hopefully match up a bit better to the Paget RS29s that are on the front of the car using AP calibers. So first port of call, time to get the car lifted up an axle stands and get the first wheel off. Folks, you can see the discs, uh, calipers and pads here. I'm going to do a few other jobs at the same time here. I'm going to remove the stone guard while I'm at it. So I have a wee Dremel tool with a, a cotton wheel on it. Once I get the disc off and the caliper off, I'm going to slice that all back and tidy it up a bit. Um, and really it's a case of undoing those two screws. That'll be the disc out and the slider pin bolts here and here. And further down in, there's two uh, caliper carrier retaining bolts as well, and that'll lift the caliper off as well. And then it should be in uh, pretty much uh, good shape. Um, so first port of call, I'll also remove or turn off the handbrake as well. So I'll do that now. So we'll okay, that's the handbrake off. Now to try these bolts. That one's coming out, which is good. These are a massive pain if they're crusted in. I was the last person at these rear brakes, so I've covered them in copper grease, which is worth its weight in gold. Okay, that's the two retaining screws out. Time to look at the caliper, getting it off. Okay, two tools coming up now. 17mm spanner, just to lock the slider pin in place and I'm using a ratchet with a 12mm socket on the end of it and let's get these bolts undone okay that's that loose and you'll see the 17mm spanners just to hold that in place as I undo it Okay, there's the bolt out. Technically that top half is loose. Um, same on the bottom now as well. Okay, now on to the bottom one. Okay, the next job is to remove two screws here and here beside each other. This is the handbrake cable here and that bracket just holds it in place. If you loosen these, you just get a wee bit more room to get the caliper off. You don't necessarily need to, but I do it just to make life easier on me. Twelve mil socket I'm using again by the way.
Okay, time to start trying to remove the caliper. Just to give myself a bit more room and remove the bracket that holds the brake line on here too. Okay, you'll see that's the caliber pretty much off. I can set that to the side. You can see that's the pads exposed there and the piston of the caliper itself there. I had to use a wee bit of leverage just to get the caliper off there. So just a wee small uh, set of crowbars, those wee small ones are very handy. And that's that off. Um, so next stage will be to make sure that piston is fully wound back in. If I show you it see the plus sort of shape on it there you basically get a wee wind back tool that has teeth a bit like a big sc screwdriver and you turn it back in just to make sure you wind it completely back in and obviously your new pads are going to be a bit thicker so you want to give them as much space to allow you to slide the caliber back on again so next stage will be remove the pads get them out of the way and wind the uh, piston back in in the caliber Go from there. Okay, hey folks, time to remove the pads here. You can tell I'm not going to be too precious about these because they're being replaced. Folks, you can see why people complain about the DS2500s, about them crumbling and feeling a little wooden under uh, high temperature use. You can see the way they just sort of crumble away there. They're not really, they're more a fast road pad as opposed to a track pad. They've lasted well, but you can see I'm replacing these, so good riddance. Okay folks, time to wind back the caliper piston. Uh, apologies for the background noise, the neighbour's doing a bit of gardening, but no bad thing, hopefully you can still make me out. Anyway, caliper piston wind back tool. Very simple device, threaded uh, bar pretty much. A plate that locks into the back of the caliper, and you basically wind it, and those teeth attach into the cross on the... Uh, on the threaded part of the, the piston there and as you turn that will wind it in or indeed out that way. So we want to push the piston back into the caliper and give us as much room as we can. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Wind this back out a wee bit more. Okay. Okay, and if you can see that, that's turning. I'm just pushing the piston right back in. And the advantage, I've loosened the cap on the brake caliper reservoir just to make sure there's no, we're not pushing against the seal. So I've loosened it to allow the air to come back in. So just adjust this again. Tight. 
I don't want to put any major force in this. And that's it, sort of bottomed out. Give it another turn just to make sure. That should be us. Um, that's us pretty much good to go. That's the piston pushed back, so giving us as much space as we need. Now, the next stage will be to remove these carriers, two bolts at the back, get the disc off, and we'll go from there. Just thought it'd be a little more helpful in this wind back tool just to show you it in a bit more detail. This is a wee cheapie off, it was Amazon or eBay. Nothing fancy. That retaining plate just slides back down there. And you, you have loads of these wee caps with teeth on them and held in by magnets. And basically, they have different sort of teeth or sizes based on what. Uh, the size of the thread or the caliper is and if it's useful for reference you can see the four there you see that just attaches back in like so dead easy nothing sim simple tool that just works well okay the next stage is removing the bolts for the caliper carriers and in this case they are a 14 mm bolt and as you can see i might have cheated quite a bit here and loosen them already. Let's see if you guys have a listen to me swearing and shouting at the uh, bolts that were on pretty tight. Oh, not the camera, sorry. Okay, there's one bolt out. dropped it and that's the carrier out in this there and with the carrier off the disc will be left right off or it should there we go that's head off that disc as you can tell I'm not going to be precious about it that'll never be used again by me and saying that those are Brembo plain discs they've lasted two or three years of track days and you can see how well they've actually lasted. Well, they look bad with the corrosion and stuff. There's no major wear on them. And if anything, the pads have sort of maybe worn away. So they're not maybe wearing exactly as well as they should. No fault of the discs, but they've lasted well. And zero cracks. Can't argue with that. Okay, my next plans will be a wee bit of a modification. I'm going to remove some of the sort of stone guard for this uh, just at the back of the disc here just to try and help get a wee bit more extra air in around the brakes and I'm going to use a Dremel with a cut off wheel just to go around that um, yeah that's the next pl plan and hopefully that goes through it okay without causing any issues we shall see Okay, making a bit of quicker progress than using the Dremel. You'll see I've marked a rough sort of circle round the outline of that uh, the sort of stone guard there, and you'll see I've started cutting it. I'm just using my aviation snips, or tin snips, call them what you like, to work my way around this. Um, this is a bit quicker than me going round with the uh, getting the Dremel set up. Um, it's doing a good job. And actually, when you were marking your path, look behind, making sure there's no wires or anything that you're potentially going to cut, even worse, your brake lines and things like that. I'm not quite aiming for perfection while these are cutting very cleanly. It is a track car, so it doesn't need to be totally perfect.
I was like, um, that's kind of cleaned up. And I'm like, do you guys just kind of quick, that's over with the five, just really quick, like, shopping set. Take a little picture, I'm going to have some Okay, and a quick once over with the five. I'm also going to give this a quick scrub up, um, really there's bare metal there, I don't want it rusting, doesn't really matter in this car as I mentioned before, but I'm going to give it a quick scuff up and give it a quick once over with some black paint, just really to stop it rusting, as opposed to aesthetics or anything like that. Okay folks, we're making decent progress here. You'll see the stone guard there that I cut off. I've given it a quick lick of paint there. Nothing too fancy, just in satin black, just to stop it rusting. And you'll see uh, the wheel speed sensor there. Um, I taped it up just before I was painting, just to make sure there was no paint or any swarf gets in and, and clutters it up or causes any issues. The brake caliber you'll see there, I've given it a very quick spray down just around the rattle shim there with brake cleaner just to clean it up. Um, done the same with the carrier there. Um, I'll be taking these out in the next bit here to grease them up. And you can see the remains of the stone guard on the old disc there. So next stage, just for ease, I'll throw on one of the discs and then look at taking off the slider pins and getting them greased up. One wee top tip is just for this hub. Give it a light coating with copper grease. I've uh, been over this with a wire brush as well so don't want any disc run out or anything here so as I said I went over it with a wire brush making sure it's clean there's no co real corrosion or anything on it or any dirt get it all nice and clean and the copper grease will just stay keep any corrosion at bay or certainly reduce it okay time to grab the new brake disc and a couple of the retaining screws as well You can see the new brake disc here in the bottom right-ish of the screen. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe down with brake cleaner. I've done this previously in my paint brake disc video. I'm just going to give it an extra wipe down because it's been sitting in the garage for a wee while. Obviously do the inside. You can see the rain didn't do me any favours when it did rain on them.
Okay, that should be it pretty much clean. Now the next thing to prep is the two retaining screws there, which hopefully you can see down at the bottom there. So just a little off shot. And I'm going to load these up and get them ready with copper grease. You might as well go over the top with it because these things, if you do get them seized in, they can be good fun trying to get them out. Okay, that's both of them quite well loaded up. So, time to give my hands a wipe. And get the brake disc lined up. Okay, time to get this brake disc lined up. You see, I'm going to try and line up the screws there for the discs, which I believe are those screws there. Sorry, try and get these lined up. The ones with the recessed. Okay, nearly lost the finger. That's the disc roughly on. Yep, all those holes are lining up. And time to put the retaining screws on. Okay, and you'll see with those, or you might have seen with those screws, literally as soon as the thing stopped turning, I didn't turn it anymore. They're only really to hold the brake disc on so it doesn't fall on your, your toes whenever you're taking them off. So they don't really need to be tight. So literally hand tighten no more. Now that the, the new disc is on, I can do a bit of a clear up and I'll move on and remove these slider pins here and get these greased up. Okay folks, had a bit of fun getting one of the slider pins out. Um, this one here you can see is actually pretty dirty. Um, it's stuck fast in there so you'll see I have had to use the mold grips to try and get it out there. And at least you can see there is a flat spot on the slider pin there so you can get the mold grips around it to get it out. And you can see this one is moving perfectly fine there. Well, the other one seemed to be sea solid but either way um, I will get these all cleaned up and recreased now. Hi hey folks, I've had great fun uh, getting these slider pins sorted. What was traced to be the problem was, if I can find it in this boot, it was actually split that's the hole there. I don't know how well that comes out, just between the finger and thumb there. Basically there was a split in the boot, let the grease get out and obviously dirt and stuff like that there get in. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some silicone grease. That's from Brakes International from memory. And get all these slider pins greased up. And my aim is to use pretty much all of this packet for each carrier. Obviously I'll use another packet for the other carrier. And load these all up. And load up the slider pins as well. Good to go. 
and I luckily had um, a spare boot so that slides on perfectly like so a bit more grease around here and do the same on this one as well and get these cleaned up I used tons and tons of brake cleaner and a bit of scotch a scotch pad just to get them all as clean as possible they're fairly cheap to replace actually if I thought I would have just bought new slider pins anyway I should have um, they're cheap to buy but these will get me going anyway at the very least so dump a bit more in there A bit more in there. You can feel that's absolutely loaded. Good. And in typical video fashion, I actually put the boots onto the slider pins too early. So you will see, um, I you're actually meant to put the the rubber grommet jobbies onto the carrier first, and then put the pins into them after that. So we'll do that now. As you can as you can see I've done that now. Like so. And making sure they're all nice and secure and there's a wee recess for them to sit in. And then you slide the pins into them. Okay, I can now put on the carrier, so if I gently slide the carrier down here and thread on the pole. Well, let's get going. Okay, that is both the copper carriers bolts on. So time to give them a wee nip up and torque them to spec. My next wee tip is to use Ceratec. This is a, an anti-squeal uh, lubricant for brakes. Um, really this is for things like the wee sliders here and there. And you put it on the backs of each pad as well. 
basically it's like a sticky lubricant that stops some of the squealing that you can commonly get in brakes and you're not actually meant to use copper grease on brakes so this will hopefully do the job copper grease can actually damage the seals if it comes in contact with the rubber so this is the right stuff to use so covering all those shims there give them a good generous coating and what I'll do now is I'll shift the camera and point it towards the brake pads, getting them ready for installation and greasing the back of them as well. Okay, so the brake pads, um, you'll see when you get your four brake pads in a set, they'll all look very similar. But the difference between uh, the two pads for each caliper is you'll see, if I bring it a bit closer, those four wee nubbin jobbies. Um, those four wee or three wee nubbin jobbies go to the um, piston side of the caliper and that there one without any nubbins as I'm going to call them goes to the outside of the caliper and basically what those wee nubbins do is they allow the anti-squeal shim there to locate into it and it just stops the, the pad moving a wee bit against the caliper, not a bad idea. And also while I'm doing this, you'll see I have the anti-rattle shims. They were replaced a few years ago, and obviously they're past their best now, but they'll still work. So the next thing I will do is get these, the back of the pads all greased up. Um, and the same with the anti-rattle shims as well. Don't forget the sides of the pads, the shoulders or arms just here, where the tender run along the side of the caliber carrier as well, just to stop a bit of squeaks from that as well. Those, those were the metal points that you graced earlier on the caliber carrier. Okay, that should be us pretty much good to go from a greasing point of view. So I will set on the shim like so and like so. They have three legs that are bendable so you might want to bend them back into shape just to hold tight onto the, the uh, pad. seem to be spot on. So my next step is to mount these onto the carrier. So I'll just move the camera here like so and do the rear um, pad and as mentioned that's the one with the three nubbins and slide it in. to go on as well. Okay, that's the pads in now, so really the next steps will be to start putting things back together. So things like the handbrake cable, caliper, etc, etc, things like that there I want to go back on now. So let's have a go at doing that.
that's the caliper roughly in place as you'll see if you're struggling with the uh, handbrake uh, cable putting it back on what I would suggest is you do it whenever the caliper is loose before you set it back on and um, the handbrake cable sitting down here you can just grab the caliper hook it back on dead easy makes life well significantly easier whenever it when land whenever it's folded on so next steps will be to gently thread in the uh, bolts for the slider pins these want to catch and we don't so that's the camera as well you'll see there is a wee bit of play in these so you'll see I put a bit of pressure just to push the caliper towards the uh, towards the pads of the disc of the centre of the disc ok that's roughly them hand tight now I will of course torque these up um, but that's the gist, that's your brake pad change done um, a few small things like brake caliper uh, cable clip to put back in but that's pretty much the gist of it nothing too complicated there take your time and you can't really go wrong and obviously because we haven't broken any cables there's no fluid to replace etc etc so I will finish getting this all uh, tightened up and go from there okay folks I've made a start on the passenger side and you'll see I have a few bolts already on listened and things here so I'll do this one as quick as I can I'll not really annotate this with my voice too much but just to give you a quick heads up brake disc, brake disc retaining screw removed uh, two slider pin screws removed Further back, the two carrier bolts um, have not been loosened yet. Um, loosen the brake disc retaining screw and the two screws that hold the handbrake mechanism in. I'm now going to attempt to sort of shift the caliper out. Is it coming now? This takes a wee bit of gentle persuasion. Head out. I can that set that to the side. Um, my next couple of stages will be detach the handbrake cable. You don't really need to, you could probably get away with it. Remove the pads and crack on there. And time to remove the pads. It was easy. carrier retaining bolts and remove the disc and next stage will be to wind back in the piston on the caliper 
I have the Beto ready to go.
Okay folks, that is the second and last um, rear brake pad and disc complete, installation complete. You see everything's pretty much good to go, all I literally have to do is drop, put the wheel on and drop the car back down onto the ground. No real problems or complaints to report. But just to go over things again, you'll see I put in the two bolts there that uh, hold the disc on. There's a bolt here for the brake line um, has put been, put been put back on. The two bolts that hold the, the handbrake uh, mechanism cable onto the back of the caliper are on. The uh, two slider pin bolts are on. The two carrier bolts are on as well. So that's us pretty much good to go now. Um, it's one of those jobs, certainly a DIY job and certainly something you can take your time with. Um, my next stage is probably tomorrow. I'm going to take the car out for a test drive, make sure the brakes are okay and more importantly with those level of pads, make sure I bed them in properly. Um, after that um, I should be pretty much good to go for the next sort of track day or sprint, whatever I end up doing. Um, one note to remind everybody of is remember you push the caliper uh, or the piston back into the caliper the first time you go to brake your brakes might not be super sharp especially after putting new pads and discs on so what I would suggest is pumping the pedal a few times just in your driveway or even stationary trying to push the pistons back out so that it's close enough to the pad so there isn't a big delay something you find you don't your your, your uh, rear brakes aren't working so that's something to try as well so just be wary of that anyway folks hopefully that video um, was of use to some people hopefully it gives you an idea um, and hopefully for myself from a selfie point of view hopefully they uh, provide some improvement in the braking performance as well all right all the best bye